So, wireless internet, this is an um, introduction for the people who are very, very new to uh, this, and um, or maybe some other people too. Uh, feel free to carry on doing whatever you're doing. Can you use the server? Watch. Yeah. Um, Happy, uh, well, if you see anything about Linux. So, first, a little yes. bit about me. I've been using Linux since about 1994. I started using Linux because yeah, I wanted to do some simulation of physics, and I wanted a uh, Unix type environment at home, so I could work at home. Uh, currently, I'm a computational chemist specializing in glycosciences, glycos, fancy terms for carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, if you don't already know it, are incredibly important to you. And, uh, we we study them computationally in, in my lab, um, in our lab. I also manage Glycan okay. Web, which you can go to Glycan.org. That so is a website that, that helps make it easy down. for researchers and other people yeah. to make realistic you know, three dimensional so models so of carbohydrates that are of biological and relevance and others. Because of this, I have many hats. I fix hardware, I program computers, I do sysadmin currently. That's lots of DevOps, which means making infrastructure for other devices. That is the Um I then uh, there's also chemistry to do. Modeling, graphic design, user support, etc. So I'm always really tired. Um, and that might sound impressive, but that's not the point. The point is I know a little bit about a lot of different things, right? So I don't, you can get beyond my knowledge quickly. I'll um, try to remember to say when you've done that. Um, and um, I'm not going to say anything that I think will bother anyone, but all opinions are, of course, not I'm necessarily treated as well. Goals for today. I want you to learn some relevant words and phrases. Uh, so that you can search the internet, find relevant sections and documentation that's relevant to Understand a little bit of the technology so that you can, and um, if I can Some basics of the technology so that you can inspect your router settings and modify them for that, or troubleshoot some of your issues. I want you to so understand the basics of wireless option. security um, so you'll be safer using public wireless and you can configure your home for wireless security. So good, and questions, questions are good at any time. I don't mind being interrupted. Just okay. I've used it, so I've used it for a long time. So, so recalling from the previous presentation, uh, you can have home uh, where we talked about the networking in general, and, and so this is sort of a typical home network. You'll see that um, we have a, the internet, and you connect to the internet using your internet service provider. They give you a modem or some DSL or something. And then, then I've, I've separated out these four things, but they can be all in one device, or they can be four different devices, or they may be divided up in, in other ways. Okay, a lot of times they're all in one device these days. But you have a router, and what a router does is it connects two networks to each other. So it connects all the stuff in your home to the big internet network, right? So a router puts two networks together like that. You might have a wired switch and you probably also have a wireless switch. And switches just allow the computers to talk to each other. The wired and the wireless switch may be on different networks and you may not be able to communicate between wired and wireless or you might be able to communicate between wired and wireless somehow the router is set. And, and how the wireless is yeah. cool. So, uh, just to recap the ter terminology from last time, network is a set of computers or devices that can exchange data. And uh, also, it's the hardware over which they exchange the data. Um, a router provides an interface between two networks. A switch lets the things in the network talk to each other. So, um, it adds connectivity. Oh, and by the way, it has to be a tree, you can't have a loop. If you want to disable your entire network at home, take both ends of the cable and plug them into the router. Almost immediately. The computers are off. So um, uh, the internet is global connection of computers, and the World Wide Web is the collection available via Here's a diagram of a typical wireless network. So you're going to have um, an internet service provider, and Usually, the internet service provider is going to come to your house via, um, or, or your office, whatever, via some sort of cable, fiber, 
or, or cover an internet uh, network. No, no, Sometimes it's wireless, uh, that can happen. Um, but it, here both of them are ethernet, so they're just uh, uh, networked by uh, some sort of wire. And but it's gonna be in the uh, a computer can serve as a router or to a, to a bridge that will allow you to connect say, two networks together. Here's some computer within range of this router, a computer that has special listening ears to be extra in range of this router. Sorry, um, but by the way, this is our attribution to use this from Wikipedia. I had to give an attribution. There it is. And that also makes this whole talk be the same Creative Commons sort of uh, license because I have to. But it's a good one. It's just attribution and otherwise use it however you want to. Um, so Wi-Fi. We need to the terminology. Wi-Fi is the set of rules for wireless communication. It essentially, it's one of the languages that computers can use to talk to each other. And most of the wireless networks that you might be on use Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi Alliance is a nonprofit that sets the standards. And there's their website, and there's also a nice Wikipedia article that their website references, so presumably they have approved most of the Okay, that should be it. There. Uh, in this here, um, sure they also the offer Wi-Fi certification. So if the product says Wi-Fi, then it has gotten approval by the Wi-Fi Alliance, and it says you know, they've done things right. One of the requirements is that they have to have backwards compatibility, and that will make your life a little more confusing because it means that your router has a long list of options yeah, that you can possibly configure, uh, you go and it can be a little daunting to figure out what is correct to use. Um, I want to mention Wi-Fi is not the only way that computers can talk, computers can talk to each other wirelessly. Um, there's also Bluetooth you've probably experienced, which is another protocol for having computers talk to each other. It is optimized for short range communications and backwards. Yeah. Um, the backwards compatibility, like I said, means that older devices work, but lots of options. For example, encryption, you'll see a whole bunch of them. The WPA and WPA2 are probably the best to use. WEP is a bit older. WPS is fine as long as you don't okay. use the PIN because the PIN is a really bad security flaw. So if you have no idea what you're doing, just use one of the WPAs. Um, DDRT, which I'm going to go into in a few minutes, uh, has extensive documentation about all, uh, uh, overwhelmingly extensive sometimes, about, but about all the different um, uh, configuration okay. options. Um, so it would be overwhelming to someone new if you just sort of go dive in, but there are newbie pages and talk more about this in a bit. So types of wireless LAN, the most right. common is called infrastructure. And in your DDWRT, which is just picture of it, uh, they call infrastructure type of wireless AP for access point. And this is, like I said, the most common. Hmm? And your device is just acting as a router between your local area network and the wide area network the, from your ISP or, or wherever. Um, the WAN can be wired or wireless. In DDRT, if it's wireless, like if, if you connect, if your ISP gives you wireless internet, then DDWRT calls you a client, calls the that router a client. It's client or wireless. Um, and peer-to-peer -peer is another type of wireless LAN, and uh, the DDR okay. can let you do all of these Good. things and others. Peer-to-peer -peer lets computers talk to each other with no yeah, need for an access point. Uh, that means that the computers are all just sort of talking at once, and they just, whatever they want, they, they make a communicate uh, connection with each other. If you have infrastructure, this AP access point, it means that each computer is only going to talk to the access point. And if it's going to communicate with another computer, it has to go through the access point. Okay, so they can't, they won't connect directly to each other. This will be important for the few minutes. Um, so peer-to-peer uh, -peer is not really all that useful if you want to get to the internet, but it's great if you've got a little network in your office or what have your computers that just need to talk to each other and there are no security issues. Wireless distribution system. That's when you have a bunch of routers, um, like you have a really big building and you want to have someone be able to walk from one end of the building to the other and not have to sign on to a new wireless network. 
um, a wireless distribution system allows you to have a series of wireless um, devices you add, you know, together and, and this, this kind of happens. So Wikipedia actually has really you know, great descriptions of this and then uh, video, video documentation. It's also really good. So about DDWRT. Um, I don't think this is the only one, but it's the first one that I ever heard of, and it happens to be the one that Frida uses, so I'm going to present it. It is a Linux-based alternative open source uh, firmware. So what DDRT is, is it's software for your router. You can buy a different router that has some other firmware that the company provided, and you can put DDWRT on that router instead of what you bought. Um, they're also, as you'll see, these, these ads, um, they changed this one of the ads. Companies have started just using DDWRT in the first place. And um, since it's open source, it, you know, then you have all, all of the advantages of open source, but DDWRT is free. So if you've got an old router and you want to practice, you know, you could, it, it tells you how to install your new firmware in the router. Um, are there any questions? I'd like to say uh, I use the Buffalo ones. And yeah. They work very well. Okay. I like Buffalo a lot, awesome. hardware-wise. And um, there are, it's just about dead simple, painless to upgrade them to. Oh, so that's that makes it really nice. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and so let's see. Oh, they have, as I mentioned, lots of documentation. This is the main documentation page or screenshot of it. And um, tutorials, man, there are lots of tutorials, but um, this would tell you how to install it if you want to install it on a, a router, um, how to get tech, technical support, um, information on hardware. It really, really, really is, is, is quite detailed. Here are the many tutorials that are available. Um, actually, these are just the basic. There's at, at least as many or a comparable number in the advanced tutorials that is in the show. I'm going to show in a second guest Wi-Fi access because that's going to be um, very relevant to the um, open wireless movement that John is going to present in a few minutes. Um, so. so this is their page on making guest Wi-Fi and abuse control for beginners. So guest Wi-Fi is so if you come to Frida and you use the wireless, you have to put in a password and you have to get the password from the owners and what have you. Guest Wi-Fi allows people to come in and use your network without having to have a password. And John will talk more about this in a few minutes. Um, there are a couple of things that the DDWRT does that makes that um, safer or more secure. and, and AP isolation and net isolation, those are the two things. What AP isolation does is the, it makes the router not allow two computers on its network to talk to each other. They can only go through the router out to the internet. They can't talk to each other. So um, uh, now, of course, wireless is, is this open thing, and I'm sure some way to figure out some way to hack it, but you kind of have to try, you know, you have to pretend to be your router somehow or something. So, because you know, your computer, you've already told it, I only want you to talk to this wireless router. So your computer is only going to do that, and unless the hacker can pretend to be the wireless router, then your computer's not going to listen to any other computers because you told them not to, right? Okay. So that's AV isolation. Um, net isolation. Separates yeah, completely the guest yeah. network from your local business or home network. Because you're providing yeah. someone else um, free internet access doesn't mean that they need to be able to get to your home computer or, or, or to the hacker code or, um, or whatever. So, uh, those, are, those are two sort of concepts that I wanted to, to bring up because a lot of you probably have routers at home that are capable of doing this sort of thing. And so, if you decided you wanted to provide guest access, All right. these are the things to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what prevents like the user from Nothing. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Is that is that you're providing guest access? Um, some Software. routers also have like okay. control, I, I, throttle controls. Okay. And I can't. 
explaining any off the top of my head, but there are also ways to limit, you know, keep your guest from, you know, it's starting up a, I don't call them mugs anymore. Right. Um, <laughs> I was going to say running, running oh, okay. W get recursive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know with, with no limiters. I would like to download the internet. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. My concern would be when uh, uh, neighbor gets figured out doing the illegal things online and then you get in trouble for it because it's your Wi Fi. Yeah. I've got to hear all sorts of stories about that. Right. That, that is one of the concerns. Um, and. Uh, that's so something that I haven't looked into that in, in great detail, but the open wireless movement, they talk about it. Um, so, one thing you can do is you can set, most routers are also firewalls, and you could you know, set it so that, that at least it won't allow people to go to certain uh, networks or certain things. Let's see. Uh, All right, so um, yeah, I, this is sort of a short one today, and especially since you're not asking that many questions, lots of questions, especially when we got to the hexadecimal. So actually, we had to go into the math, I mean, it was all right. This one. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's all it is to it. Any, 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 any um, isolation, once again, for right guest right access, right. network isolation, if you're using guest access, but if you're using encrypted yeah. access, like we do here at Create yeah. You want to use a strong password, uh, so at least 20 characters should be good because the length uh, of the password is right. kind of the most important. And of course, make sure it's not just a word in English language, it's 20 characters. That will be easy to hack as well, or any other language. Um, so, the wireless movement is kind of what we're talking about now. Um, and I'm going to just open the page. Um, so, I believe, um, wireless.org, I think. Um, yeah. All right, so this is the other wireless movement. John, if, if, um, yeah. if you're going to point, point with, the, with, with the mouse uh -huh. so that it will show up on the screen. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. I'm also going to try to pull up. Um, for you to say. Sorry, of course, it got. Uh -huh. I've been there before. <laughs> and. So, there we are. Um, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about like why we would want to do this. So our mission is reducing the ways of promote technology reuse, offer technology education, advocate for free software and open alternatives. Um, I also just while I'm thinking about it, if um is there somebody who could would be able to Sean, do you think that if, if we get a customer, uh, would you be able to bring bring the customer up? Um, Try it. Or, okay. Yeah. Or, or, if you're going to get a customer. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks, thanks for the Thank heads up. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, and, and I guess it, this goes to, I think, the closing the digital divide part of our mission. Um, you know, uh, most obviously we do on that front is just sell stuff for cheap, right? Uh, you know, fifteen dollar computers, thirty five dollar computers, you know, twenty dollar uh, monitors, you know, things that if you bought them brand new, you know, for the people who shop here would just not have access to them at all, or they they would really have to save up um, and probably not spend money on something else to be able to do that. So I, as far as why we would want to do the open wireless movement, well we're trying to you know provide access, affordable access to technology. And if you have a computer but you don't have access to the internet, it's pretty limited. Um, you know so 
And that's basically why it's, uh, you know, and that digital divide part of our mission is also, I mean, that goes to, you know, this, all the diversity of uh, issues within tech um, generally, and, you know, we try to address that just in, in our own organizational stuff. Um, and, you know, we don't get to make policy in Google or Facebook or anything like that. So, um, anyway, that's, that's how I tie it into, you know, why would we want to do this? Um, and, you know, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I haven't thought through every one of these, but um, you know, take a look at that. I guess you know an interesting thing about it is that the more people do it, then the less the, the less I guess an IP address or an access point would be considered a reliable identifier, um, which I think is probably a good thing in the long run. Um, uh, so, you know, they have these kind of how-tos, um, you know, ISPs in support of the wireless, um, and that's not a link. Um, so, yeah, any of those people they sort of um, so there's the will will it make me liable for others illegal actions that was in the other class. Oh yeah, okay, I see. Um sorry. Then a little bit. Um smooth work through with letters. Um maybe a little bit. Right. Yeah, I mean, so she'll talk a little bit about how we can probably prevent someone from, you know, really just, you know, basically throttling the network. Um, I think that's the only way it would be a problem for us, right? I mean, is that, you know, we're, I don't think that we're especially limited by anything but bandwidth. There's actually a great 
this isn't a security talk in long term but um, this is a, a pretty good plug in to work on with Firefox and Chrome. Just to make sure that you know there's a website that if you always get the HTTPS and the encrypted version of it, um, rather than a, a plain text version. Um, so it talks a lot about this. Um, I mean, I think that the, the biggest risk for us would be DMCA takedown notices um, uh, or people think, you know, copyright, copyright infringement and stuff. You know, so people download copyrighted things, break copyright on our network um, and EFF has done a white paper on that um, and I think, let's see, yeah I think that this is that. Um, yeah, so here's that. Um, So they talk about, I'm not going to go all through this, I, I think that, you know, the, the risk to us is pretty minimal I and mean, it sounds like you can usually ignore these, either that or have a form letter that you just send off saying we run an open wireless network, it wasn't us. Um, and this this is a pretty good, well, uh, what there is somewhere a pretty in-depth white paper about the, you know, the legal implications in terms of what the law is right now, um, uh, federally, and what you need to look into um, statewide. I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, seven pages, and it's got you know refers to case law and. Stuff like that. Um, anyway, it talks about it. Check it out. Um, I think I'm gonna let Michelle uh, continue with the presentation. Yeah. Unless there's any questions. And... So yeah, a lot of the presentation I just gave was sort of targeted at, at this because I knew that this is something that is of interest. Anyway, um, I don't have a whole lot more to present about this. If, uh, if, there, if you had a question or something that you're interested in or something you just want to talk about, bring it up. Theoretically, if you had a competing story, you could just go over there and download a bunch of legal stuff on the internet and uh, bring them. Yeah, I mean, but I, I don't know, I, I think it was, I think, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, yeah, copyright trolls, there's this sort of sign, yeah, that is occasionally able to represent, yeah, uh, copyright trolls, is that, that's what you're talking about. Um. So, um, I mean, when I've looked at it, I, I, it, 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 it seems like it would be a pretty rare case um, that there would be something more more serious than somebody than a copyright allegation. And it sounds like, from what I've read, it sounds like that those are pretty easily dismissed with just a letter or, or nothing at all sometimes. Um, <clears throat> you know, I guess if mean, somebody does, you know, Human trafficking, you know, something crazy. Um, not yeah, you know, someone commits a crime on your property, property, that doesn't make you mm -hmm. right. So, you know, right. Yeah. You know, but that I mean, it is it's definitely something to think about, and something mm -hmm. that we need to have a a, a strategy and you know, a protocol of mm -hmm. dealing with. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, how to enable guest networking on your router. Um, so, you know, so, you know uh, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of 
having Frida's, at least the critical network, you know, not be as public. Oh, right. I think that we should have a, a password protected Wi Fi as, as, as well. Oh, right. Yeah, but also, you know, then we have a bunch of social security devices that would, you know, just anyone can get to. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah keep it a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that would be kind of really a sort of level. Um. As John pointed out, if someone hacks Africa, uh, then, then every yeah, sure. station that gets imaged potentially could, could be. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you prefer that. Uh, and the whole State Department goes down and mm -hmm. because. Right. It's, it's because of us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. Uh, but yeah, it says, I. That sort of concern, you know, just keep it down. So, um, all those be separate. Um, yeah, all right, so, but anyway, that's the ad isolation under BBWRT, that's what that was talking about. Um, all right, so, that's, um, that's kind of all I have. Um, I'll, I'll, touch, I'll touch on the VPN part. Huh? I'll, I'll add a few things. About the um, VPN? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are this probably about 30 different ones and people are starting to create their own VPN um, you can get sometimes people will say you're better off let's say using your own one that's running at your house so that when you are away they would rather this is from someone who works like in a who's done like a in the medical office. So they would use clear OS. Um, and so that they would, if you had your server or your, your, your VPN at home, it was better than paying for a service because how are you really knowing what that they, because some of them do log. Um, and there's one in particular that will log Things that you type for one whole month. I think that's uh, something that has the name Frog in it. They're actually based out of California. Um, then I think you might get something that's going on with in India. And a friend of mine who's in private infrastructure, they were playing with them, and so you were on Google and you're in India, but then you got hacked out of California, and so they were into your Gmail account. But they logged everything for a whole month. Another person did, said that they would stay with the basics, and they would say, keep a vast. But then now with creating all those, you know, you making a you know, Raspberry Pi and doing it that way, you could have this mini little router all to yourself. Um, but if you go through that, so concerned, um, but you know, I would agree. Don't do banking on the open network, basically. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, um, that is something you can do. Is you can set up, you know, um, a Linux box at home that you can connect to whenever you're on. If you're just using it for the purpose of, you know, keeping an encrypted tunnel from your laptop at the coffee shop to home and, and, and basically trying to prevent other people on the network from doing that. Of course, it's still coming. It's still coming out of your home, so you're not going to be able to, um, you know, uh, log into the BBC or whatever, and, you know, or, I mean, a lot of times people use this to circumvent, uh, you know, uh, what, do you, what do you call that one? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, you, so it won't help you with that, but yeah. Well, one would, uh, he like, let's say it was Tunnel Bear, where you were, had your VPN, like, one that was in the United States, but he liked the BBC stuff, so that gave you, at least you got um, England, and those were two choices. But where they opened it up, something that's a lot more riskier was someone had used, like, it's called NordVPN, and they would end up, there were just so many servers, but 
if you're keeping it to news, then yes, you are checking out what's going on in China or Sweden. I mean, it does give you um, and get the pages translated. Well, so there are some neat perks to, and you could pay for like private internet access, just that, just to see what's uh, the news part. Um, and if you do like, you, you like that. They're just not banking on that VPN. And, and by the way, there's open VPN, so there's a guy that can just at get you know, those, um, that that will allow you to have a, a virtual private network. So and they can throttle throttle it, but it is in control, so it could cause it to be way slower. That's um, where we control it. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you use a service and then you go to something. Anyone? One of the things that I see in, in my day job is, as I whack out VPNs to stop kids from using them, is that, um, as always, if, if you're not paying for something, you're the product. And so a lot of people will use a VPN to get around something or to go someplace else. Well, if you're not paying for it, they're taking advantage of you in some way. So. It's not necessarily improving your security just to use something else. You're better off sticking with encrypted websites. And you know, even going to a banking site is fine with some technical caveats. But for most people, in most situations, going to a, an encrypted website is perfectly fine. You don't need a VPN, even if you're using public Wi-Fi, as long as it's encrypted and as long as you maintain you know, if you're using it on your PC, for example, or your laptop, or your phone, or what have you. So. Um, Maybe we should start talk one day about encryption, pretty good privacy, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, so yeah, I just want to make an announcement. Um, we've got, I guess, 15 minutes left or so. We are having a, a Chubbalo meeting tonight, and so if anyone wants to stick around for that, you're invited. Um, and if you're working on something right now, try to kind of wrap things up. Um, we'd like to kind of at least be, we'd like to kind of be ready to go at A. Um, so get to a stopping point, clean up your area, put our tools back, um, and uh, know the I'll help you clock out when you're ready. Trying to stop the recording. Uh...